finally jennifer is lost in this london finally like i was like okay people should cuckoo cuckoo might just send me back to nigeria i was like okay so what am i supposed to do they said well they can't check me in and the flight will soon leave and blah 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 they can't check me i said okay what do you want me to do i don't have a bank account i've told you that i'm just coming in this is the first time i'm coming into this place i don't have a bank account that's number one Number two, I have cash. And I said, I brought out the cash and I've showed you I have cash. Let me pay you cash. You said, no, you don't accept cash. I said, okay, what are your other options? You said, I should go to this travel agency and then they're going to issue me a card. You sent me there. I've gone there. Getting there, they said they're no longer issuing card. And I've come back to you and you realize that actually they stopped issuing card. Now, what do you want me to do? What's the other option? Because I don't understand. Are you going to leave me here? <laughs> my channel welcome back to the part two of my video on the challenges i faced moving to the uk yeah those like i don't even want to start thinking about them like it was really a horrible experience really horrible experience for me so you most of you must be here for the part two of the video and so if you're here and you've not seen the part one you need to go and watch that video the part one you need to see the first of all you need to understand the challenges i had to face even before leaving nigeria so before you get to hear what happened after i arrived london you need to hear that one anyways let's get straight into the video <laughs> like already stated in the video before this one i left nigeria on saturday and saturday was the 11th 11th of september 2020 i left nigeria on saturday and then i took i took ethiopian airlines and ethiopian airlines who first of all stopped at chad to pick up some people and then we had another wait over or layover anyone they call it layover in ethiopia of about them um, i think two hours before we took off to london and then i arrived london by 7 a.m in the morning that was the final destination for the ethiopian airlines that i entered so getting there i had to you know get my stuff together see me many carrying backpack two uh, boxes one big one one small one gonna go like it was something else i carried it got to the british airways stand and then i told them okay i want to check in blah 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 i want to check in and all that so i, I was there trying to help myself out and then I realized that the human being that booked my flight did not consider my luggage while booking my flight. Now, let me state this clear. In Nigeria, if we're booking flights, we don't, you book your flight and you know that you're entitled to um, your luggage. You can carry as much as um, 220 kg. Now, it's not the same over here. It's not the same. Mm? And this one being that booked my flight did not consider that. He did not consider that. Yes, I don't know for him. And then he booked me a flight that only had um, hand luggage. Checking the one you enter the plane with, your hand luggage. On getting there now, see me, I had my backpack, had a big box, had a small one, and the Ghana must go. And then I got there, and then the British Airways people are telling me that, um, we're sorry, but you didn't book for um, your luggage and all that. I'm like, what's happening here? Like, I don't understand. They said, yes, the, the ticket you bought does not include your luggage. Ah, so what is happening here? Like, I was running crazy. I was like, what is this? What's the meaning of this? And then I had to, I had to call via WhatsApp. Like, I called my people and I was like, what is this now? What's the meaning of this? I am here now. They're telling me that my ticket does not include this. Like, I called and I was ranting. I was like, what is, what's the meaning of this? I'm here now trying to board and then and i arrived very early 7 a.m i arrived 7 a.m um london i arrived 7 a.m here and my next flight was supposed to be by 12 that's london to um glasgow and this boy have kept me this is 11 30. this boy have kept me here and i was just ranting that was the mean of this like i, I called home and i was ranting. i said are you people seeing look at now she be people are seeing i told you put this thing before i told you like i was just ranting that look at this and so they said okay they were, i had an uncle i have an uncle who stays here and so they were like okay i should call him and then i called my uncle and i was like see you i'm stranded here and i don't know what to do they said the person that booked my flight did not include my luggage and all that and he was like oh wow that he that's how it's actually that it's not like regular nigerians that when you book your flight you know that you have two luggages attached to it obviously the human being that booked the flight 
Maybe he saw the cheap one and he went for the cheap one. I don't know why he would do that. Anyways, he maybe he decided to go for the cheap one. I don't know what all the money that was given to him was used for. So I called my uncle. Then my uncle was like, okay, I should talk calmly with the people and that um, they would understand my situation and all that. I should explain everything. Um, hey, these people call their manager. I explain, talk from that dynasty. Seems they're not understanding what I'm talking. I told him, okay, I have cash. Can I pay for my luggages? They said they don't accept cash. I said, okay, what can I do now? Because I'm just coming here and I don't have a bank account. What should I do next? Like, how then am I going to pay? They said, okay, I should go to one. This, I've forgotten the name of this thing, but it seems like a travel agency that issue you a card that you can maybe deposit money into and then pay for your flight stuff and all that. I went there and then I've forgotten the name. And then the people were like, they've stopped issuing card. And I'm like, okay, finally. Jennifer is lost in this London. Finally. Like, I was like, okay, people should cuckoo. Cuckoo might just send me back to Nigeria. So I went back to the British um, Airways and I told them, I'm like, um, I've gone there. You guys sent me to this place and I've gone there. But they said they're no longer issuing. And the, the man was like, oh, yeah, that's true and all that. I was like, okay, so what am I supposed to do? They said, well, they can't check me in and the flight will soon leave and blah, blah, blah. They can't check me. I said, okay, what do you want me to do? I don't have a bank account. I've told you that. I'm just coming in. This is the first time I'm coming into this place. I don't have a bank account. That's number one. Number two, I have cash. And I said, I brought out the cash and I've showed you I have cash. Let me pay you cash. You said, no, you don't accept cash. I said, okay, what are your other options? You said, I should go to this travel agency and then they're going to issue me a card. You sent me there. I've gone there. Getting there, they said they're no longer issuing card. And I've come back to you and you realize that actually they stopped issuing card. Now, what do you want me to do? What's the other option? Because I don't understand. Are you going to leave me here? I have, I have cash. But I don't have any other, uh, um, I don't have the means to pay it, which is by maybe card. Because I'm just coming and I don't have a card. What other options do you have? They said, hey, that's just it. I'm like, are you leaving me here? I said, okay, I have some cash in my Naira account, which is also a MasterCard, uh, MasterCard um, ATM, ATM card. Would that um, be okay? They said, okay, let them try it. They tried it. GT Bank would not embarrass me. GT Bank refused the payment, as, uh, the, the transaction. GT Bank cancelled it. They tried multiple times. GT Bank cancelled it. And I'm like, they had to call, like, almost five people kept that thing to me. This book kept me. And then I called, uh, I was not talking to the other, the uh, other, the top manager that came on young and I said, see, look at my situation. I don't have a card and I'm just coming in here. But I have cash. You said you don't accept cash. You have sent me to a place to get card. And they said, I know, what do you want me to do? So now, are you saying you wouldn't um, board me because I don't have a card to pay, but I have the cash? Are you? Is that what you're saying? And then he said, well, it's company policy, blah, 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 blah. I said, okay, no, Hala. I should have just stood there and I was just watching them. And they said, well, then I told uh, one of the managers to let my bags go, that they can only allow two. And I said, eh, then what will happen? They can only allow one. And I said, then what will not happen to my other bags? Then I said, well, maybe I would later have to come and pick it. I said, I'm going to Glasgow. How am I supposed to come back here to come and pick it? They're like, okay, maybe they'll um, check it in for me and then later I get to pay. I said, that's fine. I can do that. But then they were just dragging everything. Finally, the young guy was like, okay, they're going to check everything in. So they had to use some codes and stuff like that. They checked it in my tree bags. And then I was like, okay, finally. The within the corner, the gods are in my favor. I mean, the moons are in my favor. I said, fine. I checked in. We boarded. And then I got to Glasgow. Getting to Glasgow, I came down. And then I was like, finally, yo, I've gotten to my location. At least I've arrived safely. So I called my uncle and I'm like, I've arrived. They finally let me. They checked me in. I said, yes, that's fine. So I got outside the airport. And then I got a taxi. Showed him my, my address. So with the postcode, the address and postcode, I showed him because I did not know where I was going to. I've never been to that place before. I showed him. This man Shah carried me and dropped me at one student's residence. Wrong location. Totally wrong location. And I'm like, what is happening here? So I got down. I didn't even know that that was the wrong location. I got down and I got into the place and then I saw the um, receptionist. And then the receptionist was like, oh, are you one of our students? I said, uh, I don't know. But then I recognized their logo. It was one of the agency people that the student accommodation people that were you know asking us to come and rent with them and i said oh no that i'm actually going to a different place and so i showed him my address and he said oh no and it's one black guy i think he's from cameroon or i can't really remember but he's one black 
African guy and he was like, ah, oh, that's wrong. So he had to call a different taxi for me. He gave me a drink. Actually, we had the wrong place they dropped me. It's called um, Fresh Students Accommodation. Yeah. So he, ha- he gave me a drink, called another taxi for me, told the taxi man, the taxi um, driver where I was going to, directed and showed him the everything. And so this taxi man now, that's after I finished paying £20 the first time, this taxi man now took me to my main address and I now paid another £20. The problem with my own issue is that let me get to my location took me to the location and it was the correct one the address i got there and then i came down on getting there my internet was not working my phone my network stopped working everything stopped working and that was really crazy for me it was like i couldn't reach the landlady i couldn't call her i couldn't message her nothing and i was just stuck there like i stood in front of the place because i didn't even know there was a place i was supposed to press like all this um doorbell stuff and like i stood because it was a big apartment like big building different um different flats and all that big building and first of all i have to climb up and the door was locked the entrance door was locked and that's because i had to climb to the up and then there was an entrance place i didn't know there was a place i was supposed to press and then finally i kind of got to see a place where i'm supposed to press the particular flat um number was not there on the board there and I was like, oh God, my own is finished. I can't call the landlady. I can't I can't get to her, nothing. And I was like, what is happening? I stood there for almost 30 minutes. Not almost, over 30 minutes I stood there. I didn't know what to do. And then I came out on the road and I was looking for somebody that I could just talk to. And then there was this lady who was walking her dogs. And um, was it just one dog or two dogs? I can't remember, but she was walking um, do- a dog. Let's just say dog. And then I tried to stop and I'm like, um, excuse me, ma, please, can you? The woman said, no, 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 I don't have some, I don't have some change on me. I don't have some change. I'm like, eh, oh, many, what is happening here? Is this woman, is this woman thinking I'm begging her money? Like I want to beg her money or what? Like I had to, I, I was there looking at myself. I was like, am I dressed like a beggar or what? I was like, like, I didn't even finish what I, I wanted to say. Like, the woman just told me, no, 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 she doesn't have money, blah, 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 blah. And she just left me and she was just she just walked and was going oh my god hot tears like this hot tears from my eyes hot tears you know we are stranded like all i wanted to do was to ask her to help me with her phone so that i can call because i have not gotten a uk line so that i can call the landlady and then she's she'll be in a better position to know what to do so that i can enter the building and then the apartment those women just told me she doesn't have money like madam i'm not begging you for money <sighs> She just left and hot tears like this. I was like, what's happening here? Like, it was like the entire journey, like everything was just going wrong about the journey. Everything was just going wrong about the journey. And I stood there for another. Okay, so after as hot tears was just coming down from my eyes, and I cleaned my eyes, I saw a couple coming and then I stopped them. Two advanced couples and all that. They should be in their maybe 50s. And I stopped them and I said, please excuse me. They said, hi, yeah. What's, your, what's the problem? What's the matter? Are you, you know, they were trying to find out. I said, yes, that I just got here and I can't enter into the building because my I can't reach my landlady. My line is not going because I've not gotten a UK SIM and I can't call with the number. And I said, oh, wow, do you have the number? I said, yes. Then I brought out their phone and then I typed the number and then called this lady. I called and called. This lady did not pick. And so I had to um, drop her voice notes <clears throat> about um, that I'm here. But I couldn't get there. But I couldn't get in. And so they actually they were going to somewhere. They were like, Oh, so sorry. That um if they call that if the lady calls back, since I've dropped the voice note, if the lady calls back, they would tell her that I'm standing in front of the building so that she can look for a way to let me in. I was like, Okay, no problem, thank you. And so they left. And so I was just there. I was like, What is happening here? I don't know what to do. Anyways, Sha, I was sure playing with my SIM card and then I said, and I typed something. And borrowed 1k airtime MTN. I don't know why I was just borrowing, but you know, when you're frustrated, you just start doing anything. I shall borrowed MTN um, airtime 1k. You know, when you're frustrated, you can just be doing anything. So that's what was just happening to me. I borrowed it and I said, Let me call this number. And I called it and it went through. Hmm. Oh God, it's got no wonderful. The number went through and I told them, like, I'm standing here. I've literally been standing here for almost one hour now. And she's like, Oh no, didn't you see the button? I said, I didn't get i didn't see it there you told me the flat number 
and I've gone there and I did see. Say, oh no, that's not at the regular place where you see all the other um doorbells, um flat number doorbells and blah blah blah. That I should check in a different place. And so she now directed me on this side to check and then this doorbell was totally in a different corner altogether that you won't even realize it that it was a, a, like the flat number is that you won't even realize and finally I pressed it and then the people that were in, in let me in and then I got inside. I got inside, I don't know whether I was happy or sad. Like the journey has just been very crazy and I've not eaten anything better food because I've just been chopping rubbish on that plane. Like it was just so very annoying. And then I got in and as I got in, I managed to um settle in, kept my things inside my room. I just laid down first of all and I was just wondering what kind of a journey is this? Like what can what kind of a journey is this? What kind of like I've never been that I've never had such like it was very frustrating and annoying. Like I felt like what kind of what, what kind of thing is this? Like honestly, like it's it was not the best of experience. It was not the best of experience. Like it was not the best of experience. Like it was totally something crazy. And I don't wish anybody to go through that situation. Like it was really crazy. And I was sure I just there uh, got in and I was sad for the rest of like for the next one month, like I was just sad about everything. Like it tampered with, it tampered with my mental health. It tampered with my almost everything. Everything that happened during that period, I was not ready to travel. I was, I was everything was just crazy. Everything was just crazy. Everything was just wrong about it. Like, <sighs> it was not the best of it, and it was really crazy. And I just wished I had not traveled when i did i just wished i had not traveled when i did because um it was really crazy like you know when you i was not ready to travel at that particular time like i wanted more extra one week to myself and then we're not traveling all this rubbish we're not happening they were not happening you'd be like so you heard it be like sure, sure i said it like all those like it was not just funny like it was like it's the worst of experience like really bad really bad and i don't think <laughs> man so from my experience before traveling and traveling leaving nigeria and coming to europe leaving nigeria and coming to the uk what can i advise somebody who is coming here what can i advise those who would be leaving nigeria or leaving their country to come to the uk see the first thing i have to advise you is please before you leave nigeria before you leave your country <clears throat> and you're coming to the uk and you're coming to europe let it better be that you are prepared. You are prepared mentally. You are prepared emotionally. You are prepared to live at that particular time. As I'm saying, like, you got to be prepared. Like, it's a totally different... I don't know how to say this, but I have to scream it. You have to be prepared before you leave. Ensure that you are prepared emotionally, mentally. You have to be prepared. Because it's like leaving everything you've ever known and you just find yourself in a totally different place. It's going to shock you. You're going to have... See, if you're not strong enough, it's going to impact your mental health big. Like, it's going to impact you. Like, it's, it's really difficult, especially if you're not able to integrate, like, fast. It's going to really impact you. So, what I'm going to say is, ensure that you're ready to travel. Ensure you're ready to move to this new society. Please, you need to take your time. It's not because maybe you get scholarship and stuff like that, and then you pack your things immediately and you disappear. It's gonna shock you. So, it's like leaving everything you've ever known and stuff like that. So, as much as possible, try to prepare. Prepare your mind. Prepare your, you know, get emotionally ready, mentally ready that you're moving to a different place. You need to prepare yourself. It can be really difficult for some people. While others, they, it's not that difficult for them. It's easier for them to, you know, integrate and then, um, you know, get find their way around and stuff like that. And also, sometimes, hey, people traveling abroad, sometimes their stories are not palatable. Like, it can be crazy. One of my friends got stuck in a um, train station. I think in France, you're not supposed to leave your bag because of maybe um, terrorist attacks, experiences with terrorist attack. And so he left his bag. Police was called and all that. And he had to pay some money. Like, he had to pay. He had to pay some money for them to release the stuffs. For them to release the stuffs and, you know. Please. So, what I'm just saying, like, the whole experience impacted him. Even as a person, it impacted him when he got to his residence, like he was, let me, I don't want to say he was depressed, but he was really in a bad state. 
it was not it was not a palatable experience. Imagine going to a place for the first time. You don't even have enough money on you getting there. They called police for you because they left your bag. And then you had to pay some money. The money that you didn't even have, small money that you had on yourself and you then had to pay. Like, what I would just advise, like, you have to be ready. You have to be ready. Learn from our experiences. I will drop the link to the tweets that people are dropping about their experiences. I'll drop it in the description box below. Learn from us. You know, try to prepare yourself. You might not have the same experience. People travel and they have good experiences. But all I'm saying is, you got to learn. You got to learn from us. You've got to learn from us. You know, just to prepare yourself. Prepare yourself in case something like that happens to you. You know how to respond. So I hope this video was helpful to you. If you've not seen the video before this one, go ahead and watch it. With from it, you're going to understand um this second video better. All right, guys, thank you, and um, yeah, I'm going to see you in my next video. <laughs> Bye.